Example 2.3. This is a conduction case in which the temperature distribution in a wall is given. There is a heat generation within that wall. The cross-sectional area is given. The properties are prescribed as density, conductivity, and heat capacity. And we need to determine the heat rate transfer entering the wall. Also leaving the wall, we need to determine the rate of change of energy stored at the wall. And we need to determine the time rate of temperature change at x equal to zero, at x equals 0.25, and x equal 0.5 meters. Let's just start the analysis by defining the heat rate at the entrance and the exit. So Qn is given by at the entrance and the change of the temperature at x equals to zero. We evaluate the Q exit in the same way. We simply define it as A dt dx, but now at x equal L. Therefore, what we need is to define the derivative of the temperature. With the temperature given as A plus Bx plus Cx squared, we could see that the derivative of this temperature is simply B plus 2Cx. Using this temperature derivative, we could evaluate Qn to be negative K a and replacing x to be equal to zero in that equation gives us b and if we plug in the values this is going to give us 120 kilowatts doing the same process to evaluate q out we simply say negative k the cross-sectional area a and then it's going to be b plus 2 cl by evaluating the gradient at x is equal to L. By doing this evaluation, we could see that the Q out is equal to 160 kilowatts. Please double check these values on your own. The second step is to calculate the rate of energy change that is stored at the wall. To do that, we're gonna do a balance of energy. We're gonna start with the energy going in, minus the energy even, the energy that is generated, that has to be equal to the rate of change of the energy store. We have the values of the energy in and the energy out from the step that we did previously. So the only thing that we need to calculate is the energy generated. And this is done by calculating, by multiplying the heat that is generated by the volume, which is equal to the cross-sectional area times the length. This gives us a value of 10 kilowatts. If you recall from the previous steps, the energy in is going to be equal to 120 kilowatts. And the energy out is equal to 160 kilowatts. If we take these three values and substitute it in this formula, we find that the change of energy store is going to be equal to negative 30 kilowatts. The negative value indicates that the energy is being dissipated away from the wall over time. In the third step, we would like to find out what is the rate of change of the temperature over time. We start with the heat equation. Since in this case we have one dimension, we are able to get rid of this term and we get rid of this term. In this case, we had heat generation, so we cannot get rid of this term. And the last term over here is what we're looking for. So we start with the second derivative of the temperature with respect to x. This is the second derivative, respect to x, is equal to 2c. If we substitute all the values into this equation, we find and then 2c
and once again this is the term that we're looking for. Notice that this side of the equation there is nothing that is a function of x since we're looking for the change of the temperature with respect to time at three values of x and this side does not is not a function of x it means that the, the temperature distribution with respect to time is going to be constant so we just simply calculate dt dt at any value of x and if we substitute the values is going to give us this. This indicates that the temperature is going to change by this value. It's going to reduce by this value, uh, the uh, Celsius per every second. Please double check these values and the units on your own.